Okay, so as a, a quick summary of what we covered today, I thought I would do a video. Um, <clears throat> so to begin with, we made sure that everybody could use the software. So if you haven't already done so, you need to download the Codasys version 2.3 software and install it on your machine. You also then need to download the correct target <clears throat> package for the Festo uh, PLC, CPXC CPLC, and then use the instructions that I've sent out by, via email to um, load that target onto the Codasys software. So once you have that done, then this is uh, an activity that I took everyone through, and I'm just going to go through it again here on the video. So we're going to use the PLC Codasys software version 2.3 to program and test this little device. So the system consists of two, three buttons and two lights. And it says when button one is pressed, the red light will come on. Uh, once the red light is on, it should stay on for three seconds, then go off automatically. When button 2 is pressed 6 times, then the green light should come on and pressing button 3 should turn off the green light and once button 3 is pressed, uh, it should not come on again until button 2 is pressed 6 times. So to f program this, we're going to start with a new program. So when you go file and press new, you'll get this target settings up here. Make sure you choose Festo CPXC CC1 as that's the PLC we're programming for. Don't worry about this area. Give that an OK. <clears throat> Leave PLC underscore PRG there. And make sure the program is ticked and LD ladder diagram. And we've got our little ladder here. So if you go to the fourth tab along, we need to configure the PLC. So add our I.O. module. So here, right click, pen supplement, and go it digital in, it digital out. And once we expand this, we find that we have our inputs from IX 2.0 to 2.7, and our outputs addressed QX 0.0 to 0.7. So we can then go and create our variables. We know that we have inputs, three buttons. So uh, PB1 is the first button and it's addressed to the first input. Colon to finish that. I'm sorry, I need a percentage in there. At percentage AX 2.0, colon, and then I have to say what type of variable it is. It's a Boolean style variable. And we need three of these, so you can copy and paste as long as you make sure and change the names and change the addresses. And we need an output, green light. And it's at percentage QX 0 0.0 colon, and it's a bool style variable as well, semicolon. That should be green. And this is the red. address will be 0.1. So those are our basic uh, global variables. So if we go back to the program then, um, we can start the program. So in um, ladder, the key is, I'm just going to add networks here. So if I left click into that gray area, 
then right click I can add networks after a few networks so the key to basic ladder diagrams is only have one output one line of code for each output so I'm just going to put on my outputs so global variable the red light and green light and if we go and look at our system <clears throat> it mentions here the red light must stay on for three seconds so that means we need a timer and it also says down here that um, a button must press six times so we need a counter to count those presses so I'm going to go back to the program again I'm going to put a line of code in for an on delay timer and a line of code in for counter. And you can get these in function blocks. Counter, I'm looking for a CTU, which is an up counter. So that's all the lines of code I need. So I have to put more detail into each line, but I need one line for each output. And I need one line for a timer and one line for a counter. So I'm just going to name these. This timer is going to be timer one. Hit enter, drop, put it in the middle of the variables list. And the counter, counter one, put it in the middle of the variables list. Time. So if we look again at our little sequence, so the timer, three second timer and a six count. So if we go back to PLC program T hash 3S, that's how we get a, a three second time. And then here, oh, I shouldn't have hit F2 there. I just want that to be counting to six. Okay, so counter setup, timer setup, red light, green light. So let's go back and read what we need to happen. When button one is pressed, the red light will come on. So let's go back. With our red light, we need button one to bring it on. So there you go, there's a normally open contact, hit F2, push button 1. So push button 1 will get pressed, the red light will come on. It has to stay on for 3 seconds, so I'll add a parallel line so that it self latches. So this is the red light. So now the push button gets pressed, the red light comes on, red light will keep itself on. And then we need a normally closed contact to take it, to put it off. So this normally closed contact, it says it must go off after a three second delay. So what we're going to do is use this signal from the timer. So the timer will get a signal in. It'll count for three seconds or it'll time for three seconds. Then it'll turn on this Q value out. So if I use a normally closed contact from that Q value, the output value from the timer, then push button will come on, the red light will come on, the red light will stay on until the timer lapses. And when the timer lapses, that contact will open and um, it will uh, turn off the red light again. So this TON style timer, this ON delay timer, needs a constant signal to time. But it also needs that constant signal to break at some stage so that it'll start to root time again. So what we're going to do is use a normally open contact from the red light to control when the timer starts. So basically, if the red light's off, the timer won't count. As soon as the red light goes on, this contact will close, the timer will start to count. After three seconds, this output Q value from the timer will come on. This will open this contact, the red light will go off. Both these contacts will open, the timer will stop counting.
and it won't start again until the push button is pressed. So that's the red light sorted. So back and read our little diagram again. When push button 2 is pressed 6 times the green light will come on. So back to our program. We need this counter to get a signal from push button 2. So now every time the push button gets pressed, the counter will count up 1. Once it gets to 6, it'll turn on this key value. Once that key value is on, it needs to turn on the green light. So we're almost there. We've got these question marks here. So, so let's have a look. <clears throat> Pressing button 3 will turn the green light off. Once button 3 is pressed, the green light should not come on until button 2 is pressed 6 times. So back to here. If we put button th connect button 3 to the reset, that'll reset the counter back to 0. This, this Q value will go off again. And if the Q value goes off, the green light should go off. This should not be green light, this should be the Q value from the counter, sorry. And I think that that's our program written, so how do we test it? Go to visualizations on the third tab along, add an object, I'm just going to call it vis1. And then here we need two buttons. Button one, let's try three buttons. Button one, it's an input, tap input, push button one. And another one. And another one. Just make sure you change all. If you're copying and pasting, just make sure and change all the details within them. F2 is allowing me to connect. And the lights. Green, I want it to be grey in its normal state, and when it becomes active, I want it to be green, and I want it to change colour whenever the green light variable changes state. I need the same for, whoops, just delete that. So I'm copying Control C and I'm pasting Control V, and I'm going to change this second one to the red light. Make sure the color isn't is actually red. Change the text to red. And then the other thing I can do is show what the timer is doing. So if I just type in time, use a little piece of code, percentage s. <clears throat> and then go to variables and text display and connect it to the Q no the ET elapsed time of the timer and do the same for the counter. Connect that one to the count value. Change the text to count. That should be it. We go to simulation mode, click it, go online login and online run. 